Putting a juice groove on a cutting board is one of those things that can be really daunting and intimidating. It doesn't have to be. I'm gonna show you guys a system that I've used several times over the years. It's never let me down. And the best part is we're not gonna build a fancy jig. We're gonna use simple scrap material. In fact, uh, I'm gonna be using this half inch OSB as part of my scraps. It doesn't have to be half inch. It doesn't have to be OSB. It's just what I have laying around the shop and it's gonna work just fine. Uh, this is going to do two jobs. This is going to hold my board in place on my table so that it doesn't move around. And then it's also going to be cut to a certain width because it's gonna dictate how far away my bumpers are. The bumpers are gonna be made out of three quarter inch material. And what I mean by bumpers is when you make a juice groove, you really only need to have something for the base of your router to register against. So in this case, I'm going to have something like this. When I lower this bit down, I just have to have something for my base to run across. Now in my particular situation, this board is quite thick. This is roughly two, two and a quarter inches thick. If you were actually doing a board like this, something that's like say three quarter inch or so thick, which is a very common size, you wouldn't need to even go as complicated as I am here. All you would have to do for something that's this thin is layer. So I could cut this scrap piece here to length I could have it right here, nail this down onto my tabletop, and then I have this scrap piece here, put that one right there, and now same thing, I have a bumper. I just need something for the base to register against to keep me in a nice straight line. Of course, I would need to do that all the way around. So, what I'm going to do today is even more complicated than what you would have to do. The first thing that I need to do is make my bumpers. Then we can move on to the parts that actually lock our board in. So to do this, I just need to know basically the thickness of my project. So we can take and measure the thickness of this and then add like an eighth inch. Or if we have a complicated router base where there's maybe a lip or a step or something that we need to work around, we can always measure up to the router base. But we really only need to be sticking up just a little bit, just enough so that this can bump into it and ride. If we make it too tall, it might kind of get in our way. We might get hung up on it. We don't need it to go that far. I think about an eighth of an inch over this is just fine. Now in my case, that is about two and a half. So I'm gonna cut a bunch of strips at two and a half, and then I'm gonna nail them together. I want to make 90s out of them, and I'm going to make two that are roughly the length of my board, and then two that are roughly the width of my board. All right, so now I have all my 90s put together and you'll see that we have one that's just a face and then the other side is going to be a face plus the exposed edge of the plywood. I'm going to set them up around here so that we just have the one that is the face because this side is going to be taller. And again, we don't want all that stuff in our way. You also notice that I cut it to the lengths of the plywood all the way around. That's because we don't need it to be a completely enclosed playpen. All we need is for them to roughly be the length overall. If you'll notice, I have the round base here, and this is how far away these are gonna be. This round base is gonna come down this way, it's going to bump into this one, and then we're just going to make our way down this way. So this section right in here doesn't really need anything. In fact, I could have made these just a hair shorter, but it's better to just go at least with the length so you know you have a little bit extra, but we don't need to completely enclose them like this. This mark that I've laid out here represents the center line for the router bit. So the router bit is going to run the center right down this, and that's where my juice screw is gonna go. Now, of course, we're not gonna run it out to the side here, but what I am going to do is use it to measure the distance between the center of that and the edge of my base. That's how I know where to put this uh, 90. So I'm going to run this right out close to the very edge of my material here. And I'm gonna center that line on my router bit. So I'm just kind of eyeballing. It's one of those things that's really hard to show up on camera. I'm happy with that right there. I'm gonna take a straight piece here. I'm going to hold it up against my board and just slide it forward. Once I slide that forward, tied up against my board, I can then bring my 90 degree piece this way. I just want to touch the router base here and slide it right into that straight edge piece. Now, if I was to move my router, the distance between here 
and here is what I need to cut these plywood strips at. I think that this is two and three sixteenths. So I'm gonna cut these OSB strips, and it could be anything, to two and three sixteenths of an inch to lock our board in. All right, so now we have these pieces nailed down and our board can't move. This keeps our board still. My bench moves, that's another topic altogether, but the board stays still here. What we wanna do now is bring our pieces in. Now this is the last spot where we can make any kind of adjustment. So if we wanna bring the router back over here and just double check, make sure that that is for sure where we want this to go, but it should be fine. What I can do to double check is simply slide my ruler over here, make sure that everything is still good. If I hold this piece down, just like it was nailed, and measure over, I have just a touch over two and three sixteenths here, and here, just a touch over two and three sixteenths. That tells me that I should be able to nail this down and be good to go. Now, if I wanted to make adjustments, say that for some reason this cut somehow at a taper or my piece of plywood is screwed up, because remember we are using scraps, this is where it would be okay for me to adjust one way or another. Pretty simple. But if everything went right, which it should, you should be able to just slide these up against here and nail them down. But because a juice groove is unforgiving, make sure we double check our measurements here just in case we miscalculated somewhere down the road. All right, our playpen is totally built. We have a complete fence going all the way around here, but there's a few things that we really wanna take into consideration. One, this board is made of maple. Maple burns very quickly. So I'm dialing back the speed on my router motor. This particular model goes from one to six on the settings. I'm gonna start at a four. I think I can push a five, but we're going to do this in passes. And if a four is too slow, then I can always bump it up. We're going to do this in steps. So I have the steps on my router base set so that the max depth is the third step. So we're gonna come down in several passes in different increments. I've also left myself just a little bit left so that I can do cleanup passes if need be as well. So if I do end up with any kind of a burn marks or some spot where there's a tear out, I can take a very shallow, shallow final pass and clean that stuff up out of there. It's a good idea to do a dry run. There's a couple things I want to think about here, and that is my body positioning on this board. Now, I'm not talking about ergonomics and everything, but what I'm talking about is the router base. If you have one of these router bases that are round and then have flats on it, you need to be mindful of where that base is at as we get into our corners here. I don't use the flat side. I've already made a video on the round side versus the flat side, and I'll link it in all the appropriate places if you're wondering, but I use the round side. To sum it up, with the round side, no matter how I turn this, if I'm registering up against something, my router, bet, my router bit stays in the exact same spot no matter what. If I was to use the flat side, then it would actually pull the router bit offline if I was to twist it all. However, we're going into corners. And if this flat side gets into a corner, it's going to kick out and it's gonna make it not the line that we intended to cut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave this flat spot sort of at a 45 almost to my corners, which means as I do my dry run, I'm gonna probably start on this corner. I'm gonna come down like this, but you'll see that I'm sort of angling my router this way, okay? As I come into here, I'm gonna go this way. And when I get to this corner, I'm probably gonna turn and pivot just a little bit. That's gonna make it so I'm touching round and round on my base to this corner. Then I'm gonna push forward. As I push forward, I'm just gonna turn a little bit here and again, go into here. I'm touching on the round and the round and then simply by dragging back, I'll be touching round and round here. And I can come back through here, I can turn the step, drop one down and then I can just keep going for all my passes. So again, just a couple of things to think about because yes, once we start this groove, if we screw it up, we have to get creative to fix it. I don't really wanna do that. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see how it goes.
I think this is going to work out just fine. I left myself just a little bit of room for extra, just in case I wanted to go just a tad deeper, but I didn't get any burn marks. I got a couple little tiny ones in the corner that I'm not really gonna stress too much about because as this board darkens, you're not gonna notice them anyways. Now you could use this exact same method for refinishing a cutting board. So say you have a cutting board that doesn't actually already have a juice groove, do it the same way. You could also do it for a board that has a juice groove and you're trying to refinish it or deepen that channel that's in there. You could do it the same way. Just line up your router bit, get the, determine the width of your base from the center of that router bit, set it up, you're good to go. Normally, like I said, you can stack pieces of plywood. It makes things a little more stable and it's not quite as sketchy, but this works out just fine too. Anyways, hopefully this helped somebody out there. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, see you guys in the next video.